He's going coast to coast. Clear the runway. He's coming in. It's a helicopter slam jam. He's going to pull up from three. Count. Watch this guy go. Double drive, backs it in, and gets it. Welcome back to Macon, Georgia right now as we have the third game of four games today and what a good one here. The Class 5A Girls Championship, the Winder Barrel Bulldogs out of Region 8, taking on the Southwest Cap Panthers out of Region 6B. We expect a good one here tonight as we hope you are having a great Friday, Friday evening wherever you are. We've had a good time here. A couple of great games so far and now here game three. Larry Smith here along with the former Naismith Award winner Keisha Brown. Uh, always good to talk with you. We've been talking uh, all week about this matchup in particular, this is a really going to be an exciting matchup. I mean, it is, it is going to be exciting because you have a tale of two totally different ball games. You've got Winder Barrel, who's more a half-court juggernaut type of team, and then you have Southwest Cab, who wants to get up and down the floor for 32 minutes. Absolutely. So let's start first with Winder Barrel, the Bulldogs with two Gs. We'll tell you why two Gs instead of one in a few minutes. But first off, their star player, and she's outstanding, Olivia Nelson Adota. And, and she's slim, she's athletic, 6'4", just a great presence on the court. She can handle it from rim to rim. And you can see right there, it averages a double-double, 17 and 12 uh, for these Bulldogs. On the other side now for the Panthers, they have a star matchup as well, and their star player also wears number 20 for Southwest to Camp. And Deja Alexander, she's an Auburn commit. She has a total package, as was Coach Walton talks about, the mid-range, which you really don't see in the women's game these days. She's able to just get her lift and her athleticism, get a good mid-range shot, and she finishes well at the basket. Both of these teams uh, went out of state to test themselves, and certainly it paid off for them. Them. The experience grew up a lot over the holidays and find themselves right now playing in the final game of this season. The third member of our team right now is Jackie Britton. Let's go over to her and see what she has. Hey, Jackie. Thanks, guys. Keisha, you said it perfectly. This is a tale of two totally different teams, especially when you look at their history. You've got Winder Barrow, who hasn't been to the state tournament in about 21 years or so. And then you've got Southwest DeKalb looking to snag their fifth title since 2008. And talking with Coach Thomas of Winder Barrow this week, he said that all he's really trying to do is to help his girls not ride the highs too high or the lows too low. He's trying to help them deal with distractions, positive distractions, that is, like spaghetti dinners, goodie bags, homemade ice cream and is trying to keep them even kill but he says the word Cinderella has been floating around and he does admit that a fourth seed making it this far is pretty cool. No question about that. Jackie, thanks so much. Let's look, take first uh, look at the Winder Barrel starting lineup for tonight here. The region's starting lineup. You see there the starting five, Mayweather, Maddox, Nelson, Adota. We talked about Perkins. You'll hear a lot about as well, the 5'10 sophomore. And there's a Sullivan as well. As you can see, three sophomores in this starting lineup right here for Brandon Thomas. And there is Coach Thomas in his fifth season. Uh, with the Lady Dogs, again with two Gs. Uh, played at Stockbridge under Mark Andrews. And uh, he says he's a proud dad of four daughters, loves coaching the girls' game. How about their keys to the game, Keisha? Well, and their keys are, are going to be quite simple. You have to limit Southwest the Cavs' easy basket. They want to get up and down in transition. And for Winder Barrel, you want to keep your tempo. They, they don't want to go up and down. They want to create a half-court setting, and you have to stay focused. Of course, being a Cinderella team here, the four seed, you have so many great distractions, but you have to stay focused these next 32 minutes on the court. Absolutely, and they're playing a, a team that has been here so many times, that is the Southwest Cab four state championships. In fact, they've been in the title game now seven of the last nine years. Let's take a look at their starting lineup uh, right now for Southwest Cab. The Panthers coming in at 26 and six. We're gonna check on that in just a moment as we get ready here. As again, their head coach and what a job she's done. Uh, Kathleen Richie Walton and the success she's had there uh, over all these years, 14th season with the Panthers. How about their keys? Well, their, their keys are pretty simple too. You, you want to trust the training. You know, talking to Coach Walton earlier, she has their kids in fall, fall basketball just to get prepared for the season, and they actually run cross country. Now, I don't know if I could actually make that team run in cross country, <laughs> but you want to be able to trust that training and lean on your experience of your older players and the energy of your younger players. Absolutely. Southwest to Cab again, the juggernaut. Uh, Coach says they're finishing about what they thought they would, though it was a tough road to get here as they await uh, their starting lineups to be introduced. Winder Barrel being introduced right now. Great crowd so far in this uh, already our seventh game uh, here in this weekend. And this one is no different again. Both schools very well represented. 
from the Atlanta metro area. I think all of Wine and Barrel is here. I think so. <laughs> right behind their bench today, no doubt. A lot of red in the lobby, too, in the hotel. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of folks here. So Winder Barrel, as we mentioned, they, are, they were the four seed out of uh, Region 8, but found their way all the way through. And boy, again, what a season uh, they had. Finish coming in right now here at 26 and 6 for Winder Barrel. They beat Villarica, Carver, Columbus, Mays, and then Brunswick. That's the toughest game they play. Their coach at 65 52 win at Columbus State University in the Final Four to be able to get here to make it. There's a good look at Coach Thomas. The job he has done in a very short amount of time. Fifth year here at Winder Barrow. He looks very relaxed. He does. Yeah, very relaxed. I talked to him before the game. He, I've never seen a coach that relaxed. I well, walked up and said hi, and he said, hey, how you doing? <laughs> like, you know, when you're in these moments like this, though, especially, you know, you're coming into this type of atmosphere, you know, if I'm coaching, I'm telling the team, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain from this. So you might as well come out with, you know, just being relaxed, your shoulders are light. You just want to come out and play basketball. For Southwest Cap, you have to maintain that tradition, that energy, that stamina of, of the legacy that they have had at Southwest Cap for so many years. No question. Southwest Cap ready to come out now in their home white. Uh, they're starting to line up, by the way. Cherry, Walton, Alexander, Bostic, and uh, Wui Siuba. Nice job. Did I get that? You got it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> She's an interesting player. We talk a lot about her. She's going to be jumping up. Um, very intriguing player, only a junior, but boy, she has been a star player for these Panthers. She'll be jumping up here to start the Class 5A title game. And the tip was won by Winder Barrow very quickly. Quickly down the court. That's Maddox bringing it back out. She'll reset. Perkins at the top. Very much a half court team. They will go up tempo when possible. Try to keep it simple, though he's certainly planning on some wrinkles for this game, according to coach. Trying to get it inside. Knocked away right there. Lucy Uba knocking it away. I mean, that's definitely going to be a key, key matchup because you got that slim body and Nelson Adota. And, and that, that really athletic frame of Luisi Bud. They're going to go head to head a little bit and look for maybe Adota to be a little bit more finesse and Luisi Bud to be a little bit more contact. She wants contact. Missed three pointer there. Good defense inside to deny once again. Good hands. Panthers on the break. Going all the way down and no, can't get that to go. Rebound out of bounds. It'll go to the Bulldogs. That was Alexander. Look at that starting lineup right now by. Regions Bank, and there it is. Cherry, Walton, Alexander. Say it again. Wusi Uba. Wusi Uba. Wusi Uba. Bostic. She's a great player. Just a junior. Back to live action right now. Knocked out of bounds. That'll stay. Winder Barrel. Good look at Alexander. The senior. Star player for this Panthers team. And you can see Southwest DeKalb, they came out after, after um, on the out of bounds on the other end in a 1-2-2 press. They want to speed up Winder Barrel. Takes a contact inside, but can't get that to go. Rebound out of bounds. It's going to go to Winder Barrel. No. Southwest, well, which is it? It's going to stay up for Winder Barrel. He, he pointed both ways. <laughs> And it'll stay here. Okay. He's bipartisan. He's going both. <laughs> exactly. He wants everyone to win. He's a moderate. <laughs> Again, good defense. Good active hands right there by Alexander. Taking the ball away and going inside. Takes the contact and still can't get it to go. 90 seconds in. She's for her first basket of the game. And now Schroeder exactly react on transition defense. Oh, but a great block there. Chance Cherry with a rejection. Here comes Southwest Cat. They've got a player down and they don't see her. Shot is up. No good. Rebound. Full court press here. They've got to be able to push right now. You've got a three on two if you do it quick enough. Southwest to Cab a bit slow there, looking at, instead for the steal. But Winder Barrel doesn't take advantage. That's twice. They had chances to get a fast break and didn't take advantage of it. Right. When you actually saw it from the tip, there was a good chip, a, a good tip by Adota. And uh, Latrice Perkins, she gets it. She holds it up at the three-point line. So you can just tell how they want to be able to play this game. But that was a great job of taking advantage of transition and getting to the foul line. Perkins with three for that foul, but it was on Chance Cherry. 
Let's look at that block here by Chance Cherry. Look at that great defense. Great timing, and you know, that's that's when you need to be able to use that left hand, uh, Lexi Maddox. Just go strong and put the body between the defender and the ball. So Winder Barrow on the board first. Second free throw here by Latrice Perkins, the sophomore. Bounces off. Bostic the rebound. Sophomore's DeKalb now on the push. Cherry at the top. It's Alexander, 20 on the wing. Winder Barrel plays a lot of man-to-man, -man, not much zone. They won't trap much. No, but you can see they're going to have a great help side. Winder Barrel has a, a pack line defense, to say. So anytime you get that ball on the wing, you're just going to see a lot of black jerseys in the paint. Alexander from 18. That's good. First field goal of the game, and Southwest DeKalb has its first lead of the game. Good job by Cherry. Good steal. Can't get the layup to go. Iron unkind. They're going to keep jamming these rebounders. Those rebounders for the Barrel have got to be able to rebound the ball and get it out as quick as possible. Great job right there. The pressure defense paying off. Alexander the jumper. 4-1 game quickly here as the pace speeds up in the opening minutes of this Class 5A championship game. That's Nicole Walton Watson in the game. She's a freshman, number 35. Just in the game. Jumper's good. Latrice Perkins for 15 feet. It's a great job. You want to see it on the defensive end. Just watch Terry. I mean, she's like a little gnat right now. She's probably got about three deflections. <laughs> just from just being around the ball, causing issues. Well, she's got long arms. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's using it to her advantage. That's what you're going to get when you, when you get an athletic team like Southwest Cab. You know, sometimes those overhead passes aren't going to work to your benefit because they're going to be jumping all the time, always active. Right now, Southwest Cab is more the aggressor in this one. That's Walton going up. And she's fouled. Coach really high on her, a junior. The foul is called on number 12, Lexi Maddox. It's her first. So Walton shooting two. You know, Coach Walton's really excited about her game and, and being able to come in and just be a really, really good spark plug in, in the starting five. You know, she's she's left-handed player. You know, which I think left-handers are good. They have that uniqueness to them with playing ball. But the fact that she's able to finish just as strong with her right hand and her left hand just makes her such a viable asset. Absolutely. She hits both. 6-3 score. And again, the full court press put on by the Panthers. It's worked well for them so far. Five-second call. Coach Brandon Thomas on the sidelines shouting out instructions. Doesn't like the way they are attacking this. Yeah, I think he's more concerned at looking at the defense with Oresiva and Odota because she's definitely pressuring up, trying to keep the ball out of her hands because they want Odota to bring the ball up the court. And the crowd wanted a double dribble there, didn't get it. By the way, already six turnovers for Winder Barrow. None so far for Southwest DeKalb. Three-pointer won't go. Rebound, contested for. Pulled down by Nelson Odota. Here's the freshman. Watson on the drive, and she's fouled. You know, I think this is this is one game that I think Watson will be able to take advantage of. She's good. She's got a great body, great presence on the game, being able to get to the basket and use her body to create contact. We've got a timeout on the floor, and we'll take one as well here. 3.41 to go in the first quarter, and so far it's the Panthers and their defense going out to an early 6-3 lead. Can they make it five in one for the thumb? We'll find out here in a few moments. Stay with us. Here, beauty is a lot more than skin deep. For more than 100 years, we have focused on creating individual success stories. This is a place where professors are mentors. Competition is cheered. Collaboration counts. Experience is hands-on and connections are lifelong. VSU, over 100 majors, championship athletics, focused on your success. How's it going?
We're right back here. Making Coliseum. Too high to the stack guy. <laughs> Winder Barrel, Road to the Championship, presented by Georgia EMC, as we mentioned a moment ago. A blowout win in the opener by Villa Rica, and then a couple of tight contests. Carver Columbus, Mays, and then again in the state semifinals, a big win over Brunswick. Just a one loss team coming in. Winder Barrel beginning as a four seed out of Region 8, getting all the way to the state championships. Meanwhile, for Southwest to cab their road a bit easier, if you will. Uh, easy wins over Rome, Cross Creek, Columbus, and then Sequoia, that uh, eight point win in the state semifinals as they get here. And they have really been on a roll. As again, trying to get their fifth state title since 2008. They haven't won one since 2013. Back to live action right now. Winder Barrow on the trigger. You know, Winder Barrow has six turnovers just to start the game, but to their, to their benefit, Southwest Cab has only scored two points off of the turnovers. Nice pass inside and gets it to go. Great execution out of a timeout. It's exactly what you need to get going. Nelson Adota gets her first pass of the game, and it's back to a one-point lead for Southwest to Cab. You know, I know we've only been five minutes into this game, but the pace is, is very favorable towards Winder Barrel. If they keep this pace, I mean, you're going to be in for a long night with Southwest to Cab. Well, Nelson Adota is really controlling the boards. Very few second chance points, although, again, the defense. That's a seventh turnover already for Winder Barrel. Alexander from 12, the friendly bounce, and it goes. And again, this press. Just keep the pressure. You got, you got Cherry at the front of it. She's going to get those deflections with her length and her athleticism. Watson with the ball. That's Latrice Perkins. Nelson Adona inside, and she's fouled. Now on Jada Walton. It's her first. Good look here, Olivia Nelson Adota. Six four, only a sophomore. She has so much more growing to do, but her potential is amazing. Already, Coach saying is in college is already calling, wanting to talk to this young prospect. You can see why. She's got a good frame. She's got a, a good touch. Around the rim, great free throw shooter. Obviously, you don't see you don't see that no. from a lot of bigs, you know, across the board from high school on up to the professional ranks. I was going to say the same, the same yeah. thing is that she's got a nice touch from 15 feet right there, so certainly she can expand that outside game pretty easily. You would think. Ball would be out of bounds right there. That was Perkins uh, tapping it to a teammate, but she was out of bounds when she did so. So it'll stay here. Panthers ball. First substitution right now for Southwest to Cab. Caleb Benefield coming in. Jada Walton comes out. And the first turnover right there. Chance Cherry bouncing the ball off the knee of Wusiba. Just an unforced error right there. You know, but uh, talking about Cherry, Coach Walton is just so excited about her. After, after the break, the Christmas break rather, when they, they took their, their talents outside the state of Georgia, you know, she realized that she had to pick it up, and she had more to give to this team. That's it there by Lexi Maddox, and it's Winder going back on top, 9-8. You know, they finally figured out a way to, to break that press, and that's made a difference here in the first quarter. Well, a, a lot of it is just get down the court. You know, it, it's a 1-2-2 press, but it can also transition into a man press if you just go ahead and get the players down the court. Air ball there by Alexander. Here's a young player, the junior. Oh, she's blocked by Nelson Adota. Alexander, she's blocked by Perkins. Still Panthers ball. Alexander looks at a three, no. The drive. That won't go. And the Bulldogs with some great defense there. Two this, block shots. This is the defense of what Co Coach Thomas is talking about. Watson there almost with a three in transition. But the length right there of Winder Barrow pay really paying off. Southwest of in fact, now. Just their last five free throws. Their five field goals, I'm sorry. I mean, that's attributed to, to the defense of Wanda Barrel. Just being in that help side, Adota got a great block. We would say a tap back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, foul there. That's Benefield who goes down. Absolutely. And it's a 
great call seeing it from the replay, just not in position getting over the screen. Jaquela Sullivan call for the foul. It's her first. For the substitution now, it's Maddox back in the game. Correction, Walton back in the game. Bostic coming out number 32. Cherry to trigger. It's Benefield. Three-point attempt is up, and it's off the back iron, and that will go out of bounds with the winder barrel ball. Jada Walton looking for her first basket. 0 for 5 in this game. Winder Barrow beating the press, but can't get it to go. And back comes Southwest to Cab. They've got numbers, three on two. Alexander to Bostic, no. Look at Walton with the shot she misses. Cherry for three, no. Alexander, Benefield fight for the rebound. Back up and in, and travel. Winder Barrow's doing everything that they want to do on the defensive end. I mean, they're, they are making, or they're allowing Southwest DeKalb to shoot the ball from the outside, which is a great strategy. You're not going to beat us inside because we're, we're going to have the, the length and the, and the arm to keep you outside of the paint, so we're going to force you to shoot jump shots. Well, already that, that length on defense paying off for, their, for their, uh, the Bulldogs. Southwest DeKalb only 3 of 21 shooting from the field here in this opening quarter. About a half minute to go. And Winder Barrel figure out a way to beat this full court press. That's Perkins. Getting it up to Walton, the freshman. Watson, the freshman. And a foul on the Bulldogs. Looks like it'll be on Lexi Maddox. It's her second foul. Let's take a look right here. And there it is. I got her the elbow, the back of the head. She comes out of the game. They'll call, they'll call that every time. Yeah, yeah, I think that was an easy one right there. Final seconds, first quarter. Alexander in the drive. That won't go. That's Watson, the rebound. Final seconds, trying to go coast to coast. And she can't get it to go. Rebound Southwest to Cab, and that'll close out this first quarter. And oh, what a first eight minutes. Winder, Barrel taking on everything Southwest DeKalb had, and they closed the first stanza with the lead. Nine to eight as we're one quarter through our 5-8 championship game. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the technical college system of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG College in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. This isn't just any team. This is your home team, okay? It's not about A team or B team. It's not about your boss telling you to be a team player or to take one for the team. No, home team is about pride. It's about standing strong, pulling together, and going crazy about a bad call you know is right. But because it was against your home team, it must be wrong. Look, some people just don't get it because it's not their team. But Farm Bureau Insurance does because everyone needs a home team for insurance. And we are that. 
All right, welcome back. Before we begin the second quarter of the 5A girls game, I'm here to introduce head coach of the Atlanta Dream, Michael Cooper. You're only a little bit taller than me. What people can't see is I'm standing on a box. So thank you for joining us. First, I've got to ask you, of course, what was it like winning all those championships in the 80s? It was a lot of fun. Now you're experiencing what I felt when I stand next to Kareem and Magic. All those guys are taller than me, so I spent all my time looking up. But it was a family atmosphere in a way, but you know, it was an enjoyable time, and now I've moved on. And what do you think so far about the games that you've seen here today? Any WNBA caliber talent out there? I think you know what, you got some time with it. But again, it's great seeing some of the young men play, especially the young women. And uh, yes, I got my eyes open. I see somebody, but I'm not going to let anybody else know. Uh, dang it, I was hoping to get some inside information. Well, what can we expect about the Atlanta Dream season this year? A championship. All right, I like it. I like your confidence. Every year, that's what I'm about, whether we win one or not. And if we win it, we're going to look to do it again. I love it. I love your spirit. Love your confidence. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, come on out, Dream fans. The season starts May 23rd. That's right. We'll be there. I hope so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Guys, we'll send it back over to you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Love Coop. Great enthusiasm. What a, what a great uh, winning spirit he's brought to the Atlanta sports community. Love watching the Dream play. They've been excited to watch, and I'm, I'm so happy that they've had the opportunity to bring a WNBA team into Atlanta. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, see if South Coast Academy get things going. They've missed their last nine shots, three of 21 shooting to start the second quarter right now. A little different look going inside. That is Walton No. Can't get that to go, and once again, the Bulldogs on the rebound. They've controlled the boards here early on and lead by one, opening minute of the second quarter. But if you're, you're Southwest, Maker. that's what you want to do. You have to get the ball inside. You know, right now you're 0 for 6 from three-pointers. That's, that's not working for you. You've got to get the ball inside, get high percentage shots. The ball moving here by the Bulldogs. Back up top to Perkins. No shot clock, by the way, in case you're wondering. Yeah, I'm sure Southwest doesn't like that at all. <laughs> the defense inside to deny Nelson Adota and the turnover again. That's eight turnovers now for Winder Barrow. Alexander wanted to go inside, didn't like it. To get into their offense. Alexander on the move. Nelson Adota with the good hands. Ball out of bounds. It's going to go to Winder Barrow. Nelson Adota, the 6'4 sophomore inside, making it happen on both ends of the court for the Lady Dogs. I'm interested to see her stand up next to Michael Cooper. <laughs> He'll be and, close. And be able to check check that wingspan. <laughs> he, right. She actually might have him. I think so. <laughs> and he's a guard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think he's bald, too, now. So I think with the hair, I think she's got she's him. She's got him, clearly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Good-looking player. So Bulldogs ball out of bounds here. Just over a minute gone in the second quarter. Third game of four. Boys 5A title game to follow. Inside. That's good. And that's the senior, Tierra Mayweather, on the board. And she's a three-point specialist, but you get her, she puts the ball on the floor and attacks the basket. 6-0 run now by Winder Barrow, and that comes to a halt. Nice running layup there by Jada Walton, the junior. Back to a one-point game. No more press here by the Panthers. No well, more full court press. Right, you, you got to just continue to, to try things that will you know, work. It's, it's like making a pie, you know, you, one time this didn't work, you know, you, you lose the first quarter nine to eight, you know, but you come out second quarter, you have to attack the basket and establish a rhythm attacking the basket like Jada Walton did. Replay right there, nice uh, reaction to the, what the defense gave her. By the way, second foul on Cherry on that last play. Winder Barrel, very patient right now. This is the freshman, Watson. Watson from three, won't go. Walton the rebound. Here come the Panthers on the fast break. Walton up, no, that ball deflected. Rebound, that won't go. It's Nelson Adota again, and she's fouled. Raven Thurman, the freshman, number 24, couldn't get that follow shot to go. Foul here is on Benefield. That's her first for Southwest again. One more look at it right here in the fast break. She just got, she got a little hands on it. You know, Southwest is doing a great job of just staying on the boards, being relentless on the boards. You just got to turn that into positive energy now. And over again, this is Walton trying to go coast to coast, but she was fouled. And she'll shoot a pair. 
you know, for Southwest, you don't you don't want to get frustrated when you're going back on the defensive end because it's not the type of tempo that you want. You know, take your time, let the game just kind of present itself to you, and you'll be able to find the rhythm that you need. You know, Winder's doing a great job of just playing defense, solid defense. You're almost being guarded a player and a half. You, you're, you're going to the basket. Foul was on uh, number 35, Watson. That's her first. He's the sixth man off the uh, first person off the bench. Winder Barrow with her first foul. Walton missing the first. Here's her second, trying to tie this up for Southwest to camp. And she misses both. Benefield fights the rebound, can't get it, but it's tipped back into Walton. Good look inside, and the score. Corey Bostic back in the game with the buckets. An extra pass by Walton to, to Bostic. That was just a great pass. Watson uh, there, almost another turnover. Mayweather for three and gets it to go. Tierra Mayweather. Just keep that energy up your winding barrel. You can sustain it all the way through. Panthers back down by two. First three-pointer made in the game by either team. Walton on the drive. The lefty, and that won't go. Nelson Adota can't get the rebound. But it's stolen away, and right back in. That's Walton with the quick hands. The she just and the snatched it right out of her hands. Sullivan had it, the sophomore, but it was Walton with the good hands right there. And back to a three-quarter court press now for the Panthers. Watson beats it into the front court, in the corner now for May Mayweather. Back to Watson. Back to the top. That's Perkins. Restart the offense for the Bulldogs. She drives off the backboard, won't go. Nelson, a dota the rebound. Again, and that one goes for a chance for a three-point play for the sophomore, Nelson Adota. I mean, she's doing a great job of just staying on the board herself. She's going to clean that glass off. But to her to have the body control, you know, she does, she's not holding that same type of weight. She's holding that body control, contesting shots, getting on the board, staying with it, and finishing with that and one. Well, you know, the thing is, she, we, we knew she was long and slender, but she's powerful. She has great strength to grab the rebounds and put them right back up and in with a lot of bodies, a lot of things going on underneath her, and very smart to not bring the ball down. As you know, for, for big players, for big men, for big women underneath, the tendency is to bring that ball down low where the little guys can get it. By the way, that was uh, waved off. That free throw, lane violation by Winder Barrow, so the free throw does not count. Foul, by the way, was on um, a Benefield. It's her second foul now for Southwest DeKalb as they find themselves back down again by two. You know, Southwest DeKalb, they've adjusted their offense by putting Jada Walton right at the free throw line. But she's got to stay disciplined, stay right there in that paint. That, that's the heart of an offense. Jump ball there. Both teams really going at it. So a couple of shots there by Raven Thurman. Refresh. One more look at it once again. Thurman again fighting underneath. Can't get that to go. The length of Nelson Adota causing problems there. By the way, the jump ball. Possession goes Winder Barrow and the Bulldogs bring it down. And you're back into a 2-2-1, three-quarter court, half-court press. A three-quarter half well, press for them. Mayweather again. Why not? She's gotten hot. Somebody better find her. That's right. That's worked very well. They've worked in this three-quarter press. That's eight and a quarter for Mayweather. And it's a five-point lead for the Dogs. Defense! 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 Walton steps up from 18. No. Southwest of Cab needs to create that extra pass off of penetration. Walton taking a lot of shots here. That won't go. And now a fast break. That's Perkins trying to race, beat the defense down. And she does for the fast break basket. It's a seven-point lead for Winder Barrow. You've got to look at Walton's length. She just as wiry as, as Cherry. And the way she just elevates. Nice follow-up basket right there to stop a 7-0 run by Winder Barrow. That's Thurman, the freshman, with her first basket of the game. Back to a five-point game now. Three-quarter court press, beaten by Winder Barrow. Perkins with the ball. Nelson Adota. Out That's to her Watson. shot. Bounces and bounces and oh, does not want to bounce in. Nice touch though from the freshman. Absolutely. Lene Edwards in, gets it to 
Thurman for the basket. That was your picture of Southwest Cab right there. Pushing it down the court, finding an open man, getting an easy jumper. Perkins has to hurry. Timeout. Called by Brandon Thomas. 20-second timeout. He knew his team and player was in trouble right there. We'll take a timeout as well. 2.10 to go until halftime. Winder Barrow and looking good so far. 21-18, the count here at Macon. Life, like video games, is all about getting to the next level. Mastering skills, gaining knowledge, and setting goals are crucial to success in both. Coming out of high school and jumping into manufacturing, I started here on the floor hands-on. and I just worked really hard and tried to learn everything that I could, and I advanced pretty quickly. I think there's definitely a place for women in manufacturing. Georgia Department of Education's Career Pathway courses give you the chance to power up your future. More information is at georgiasfutureworkforce.org. Welcome back here to Macon in 1995. Guess what happened? Oh, there we go, 1995. <laughs> that was actually great young 96. basketball, 1996. Yeah. Great young basketball prospect by the name of Keisha Brown winning the Naismith Award. And we went to the archives, and here's what you had to say on that special night. I, I don't really know what I said. I just know that. Um, there you are. Yeah. I guess it was 95, huh? <laughs> You just try to cut a year off. Okay. Yeah, just, just a little bit. <laughs> and there she is, 1995. And Hi, family. She still looks <laughs> hasn't aged one, one bit, has she? Not at all. I let my hair down today. <laughs> Congratulations again. Thanks. Good to welcome to the GPB team. Good to have you here. Back to live action right now. There's a turnover, a steal. That's Alexander stop and pop from 15, and she gets it to go. That's a good looking shot right there when she's open, not contested. She's relaxed and poised. Another good defense here. Alexander gets it done. Great ball control, and that falls. And Southwest DeKalb is taking the lead, and suddenly it's the Panthers on an 8-0 run. Winderbrow just got to get their players down the court. That's it. That's, yeah. Well, that's the thing is that almost a little too lackadaisical approaching the defense just past the half-court line, and when you look at from a wide shot, Southwest the cab is there's nobody under the basket. Uh, that that shot has been over for them several times. Right. I mean, it's like they all all ten players take the middle of the court, and you've got to go ahead and stretch that out. If you're whining about, make them come back into the half court. Foul was on Corey Bostic. That's her first for Southwest the cab. See, Renee Edwards, the freshman, having a seat. Sullivan missed the first. See her numbers there. Averages on the season. Missed the second. Rebound by Watson. Back up and in. Great job on the boards there by Winder Barrel to retake the lead here in the final 90 seconds. Southwest to Cab. Flying for its fifth title since 2008. It's Alexander in the corner. She'll try for three and hits. Now you let her get hot. It, it might be lights out. She's been outstanding, 13 points, leading scorer in the game. And it's the Panthers by two. Good look inside for Sullivan. Can't get that to go. Rebound to Southwest to Cab. Wusiba. And Alexander controlling now. Under a minute to go. Class 5A title game. Then a back and forth. Good battle. Oh, absolutely. You know, you knew you were going to get two different games coming on. It's just it's a matter of who was gonna, who's going to take the reign of it. Alexander goes in and out. Nelson Adota controls the rebound, gets it to her teammate Perkins. Final 30 seconds. Perkins trying to go coast to coast. Can't get it to go, but she's fouled by Alexander. And she'll shoot a pair with the chance to tie this game once again. Second foul on Deja Alexander. And Perkins has done a great job of, of attacking the basket. You know, you, you, you're not seeing the transition offense from the Bulldogs so often. But she's just done a great job of attacking the basket. You know, not to worry about if it was like the last second and you want to use the, the shot or the game clock for what it is. You just want to keep attacking the basket, establish a rhythm, and get that muscle memory. First free throw is good. The foul one, one more look at it. Perkins determined to take it all the way in. 
fouled by Alexander, who just sat down for these final 19.5 seconds. The freshman, Yaria Sanders, coming in and replacing her. Look at Perkins. One of three sophomores in the starting lineup for Brandon Thomas' Lady Dogs. This is the second. It remains a one-point lead for Southwest DeKalb and a chance to add to that before halftime here. Jada Walton has the ball. She's had a big first half. Looks at a three. Front iron, no. Rebounds off the cab, but oh, it goes out of bounds. Jada Walton, you can't settle for that shot. You got to go ahead and attack the basket. Southwest DeKalb has to understand, hopefully when they go back into the locker room at halftime, that the penetration is great, but you have to look for that extra pass. Oh, Asima there, by the way. She had lost the ball out of bounds. And boy, how about this? With 0.1 second on the clock, a foul on the shot attempt. And so Winder Barrow gets two shots. Second foul on Walton. That could be a problem later. So you've got Cherry, Walton, Alexander, all with two fouls each for Southwest to cap. Check the foul one more time. Here it is. Let's see Maddox with the attempted shot and the foul right there. Nobody, nobody put a body in front of the, the man there on the full court pass. No, and I just I don't think that she realized, Walton realized that she was going up for that jump shot right there. One or two free throws, good. And so we are all nutted up here at halftime, 25 all. And what a first half it's been. The second tie of the game. We've had several lead changes. And what a barn burner is. It's the powerhouse. Southwest to Cab Panthers getting all they want and then some <laughs> from the upstart four seed out of Region 8, the Winder Barrel Lady Dogs. They're all tied up here at 25 apiece. Let's go over to Jackie now, who's with Coach Walton. All right, guys, I got Coach here with me, able to tie it up there at the half. What's working really well for you guys right now? Well, we're just trying to keep the bigger off the boards and try to limit her touches. And then what, do you, what would you like to see in the second half of this matchup? A little bit more movement in our offense and be a little bit more aggressive defensively. So far, it's a good battle you got going on. What's going to be your message to the team in there as you kind of try to maintain that momentum? There's, the reason why you play two halves is because you got to get out there and just play hard. All right, thank you very much. All right, Mark, we'll send it to you. Thank you, Jackie. Coming up on our GPB Halftime Show, we'll check out scores and highlights from earlier action and see what fans are buzzing about online in the world of social media. It's all coming up next, live from the Macon Coliseum, live from Macon, Georgia, live from the Boys and Girls GHSA Basketball Championship, live on the great GPB. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. This isn't just any team. This is your home team, okay? It's not about A team or B team. It's not about your boss telling you to be a team player or to take one for the team. No, home team is about pride. It's about standing strong, pulling together, and going crazy about a bad call you know is right. But because it was against your home team, it must be wrong. Look, some people just don't get it because it's not their team. But Farm Bureau Insurance does because everyone needs a home team for insurance. And we are that. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Is like, I don't really you, you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. At the heart of our community are the businesses that don't skip a beat. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives stand behind local commerce. Whether keeping farms running or shining a light on new ventures, we bring business, large and small, to our communities. Creating jobs, driving development, supporting dreams. Georgia's EMCs, powering our businesses, lighting the way.
Welcome to the GBB Halftime Show, live from Macon, Georgia, live from the Macon Coliseum. We are at the half of the girls' 5A state championship game, matching up Winder Barrow and the Lady Panthers of Southwest DeKalb. We're going to have first half stats and highlights coming your way. But first, we're going to check in with our Georgia EMC scoreboard. We've crowned two state champions already today. Two more left to crown. First game today was a dandy. Holy Innocence knocks off Wesleyan 66-64 in overtime. In the boys' 2A championship, Wendell Carter had 30 points, 20 rebounds to Pace Pace Academy over Manchester 65-43. Dace Alexander has 13 points in this one. Southwest DeKalb and Winder Barrow all tied up 25-25 at the half. And coming up in our nightcap around 8.45 or so, undefeated 31-0 Alatuna takes on the 29-2 Miller Grove Wolverines who are looking for their seventh state championship in the last eight years. Now let's see what fans are buzzing about online in the world of social media. For that, we go to our intrepid sideline reporter and co-host, Jackie Britton. Thank you, Mark. I'm surprised you haven't tweeted us yet. What's the deal? You're supposed to be tweeting with us. All right, guys, don't forget that you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at GPV Sports, also on Snapchat. So make sure you tell us who you're rooting for. Send us your photos. Let's get some couch gating going, some trash talk, see what you guys have to say. So first, we have Renee Unterman chiming in saying, watching GPV Sports state finals, just missing my Gwinnett County Buford Wolves teams in action. Yeah, they did not make it here this year. All right, then Jeff Benedict, great matchup between Southwest DeKalb, Winder Barrow, Dave Asia Alexander and Olivia Nelson Adoda can flat out ball 5A state title. Yeah, this game so far has been a lot of fun to watch, especially when you have really great talent out there on the court. Travis chiming in, home with the flu. Oh, we're sorry, but we're glad you're hanging out with us watching our lady dogs on GPB Sports bring home the Winder State title. So don't forget, find us on Facebook and Twitter. And also you can hash, use the hashtag spirit worth sharing. When we want to hear your school spirit, tell us where you're watching from. If you're watching from outside the state of Georgia, then let us know where. Send us your photos. You can stream these games live at gpb.org slash sports. Now before we get to the rest of the X's and O's and the game coming up, first it's time for our career play of the game brought to you by the Technical College System of Georgia. Want a career in the manufacturing or construction industry? Get a free education in precision manufacturing or welding and joining at the Technical College System of Georgia. Workers in manufacturing and construction are urgently needed in Georgia. A free education in 10 high demand industries awaits you at the Technical College System of Georgia. Change your life, tcsg.edu. Well, it's 25-25. We're at the half of this 5A game. It's what everyone kind of anticipated. Yeah. You know, Winder Barrel, kind of a Cinderella. They were unranked. They were a fourth seed. All they've done is won four straight playoff games. I know, and Southwest DeKalb certainly has a lot of history. They've been in this situation before. But, you know, Coach Thomas of Winder Barrel was saying this week that he's really just trying to, you know, they're at the end of the day, they're high school coaches. They're a high school team. He's trying to keep his girls, you know, expectations, just kind of keeping them even keel, I guess is the right way to say it. Not riding the highs too high. But I tell you what it's awesome to watch so many talented uh you know women out there and it just it's very admirable actually i wish i'd i wish i could play like that i was a good bench warmer though but <laughs> hey you know what it makes it exciting and it's certainly fun to watch uh from the sidelines this has been a great game so far and you know both sets of fans have been very loud very boisterous very enthusiastic i know definitely chiming in i'll tell you what though winder barrow a little bit louder than southwest to cab that's just my sideline predict that's my sideline report right now so i'm challenging you guys southwest to cab to get involved in social media and be a little louder on the web how about that all right well we're <laughs> getting ready for the second half of the girls 5a state championship game 16 minutes left to go that's right don't go anywhere because larry smith and the great keisha brown will be bringing you the second half and well actually the first half highlights but be with you <laughs> there in the second half as well keisha you got him you got that girl all right we'll be back right after this brings out the best in all of us. At Regions, every day is game day. 
life, like video games, is all about getting to the next level. Mastering skills, gaining knowledge, and setting goals are crucial to success in both. I attended the College Career Academy when I was a sophomore. At the time, I was working at Taco Bell, but I realized that just wasn't for me. But what I do here in my job is very similar to what I did at the College and Career Academy. Georgia Department of Education's Career Pathway courses give you the chance to power up your future. Information is at Georgia's Future Workforce. Across 91 counties, Georgia's cotton industry employs over 15,000 people with more than 3,000 Georgia farmers that bring cotton into our everyday lives. When life turns up the heat and the pressure makes you sweat, there's one sure way to cool down. For those glory moments on and off the court, cotton is with you for the win. Cotton, the natural choice for Georgia. What's the next great American invention? Meet a few Georgia Tech students who have an idea. We're Team Replantable, and we've invented a way for people to grow produce right in their kitchen. Engineers and innovators of every stripe present their proposals to the judges. Science and engineering. Industrial design. Mechanical engineering. Computer engineering. Computer engineering. Electrical engineering. See the teams who've earned a golden ticket and who will take first place at the 2016 Inventure Prize at Georgia Tech. Wednesday, March 16th on GPB. All right, guys, welcome back to the second half of the 5A girls game. I've got Coach Thomas here with me of Winder Barrow. And, Coach, this week you talked about playing your game and playing confidently. How do you feel like that's going for you so far? Uh, it's been a great game so far. I mean, they've, they've done well at what they do. They caused some turnovers and got easy baskets. And then we've handled it some and got the ball where we needed to go to score. Um, that's basically what it's going to come down to. Can we handle the pressure and defend them and rebound? Southwest DeKalb certainly making an interesting battle. What would you like to see from your girls in the second half? What was what was the vibe at the locker room to talk about? The vibe was good. I think they're confident. Um, we just want to have boys, avoid turnovers that cost us. Uh, we want to execute in the half court. All right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Larry Keisha, we'll send it back over to you. Well, thanks so much, Jackie. Uh, by the way, the double G, in case you wonder, the class of 85 voted on the second G, and they approved it. So ever since then, for the past 31 years, they've been the Lady Bulldogs, or the Bulldogs, with two Gs. All right, then. And there you go. <laughs> uh, you know what? Extra G means extra effort, and they have given that here in the first half. Winder Barrel has played this uh, an outstanding first half and tied here at halftime. And and they, they kept to the keys of what you're going to say. They need to control the tempo, which they, they have been very, very successful at doing. Staying focused with the game plan. You know, they, they've caused turnovers for Southwest the Cap with their defense, you know, and just having fun, limiting Southwest the Cap with, with the baskets, that, the easy baskets that they want to get. Yeah, an amazing stat. Not only that, but 14 offensive rebounds by Southwest the Cap, but only six second chance points. That is huge. Again, so they're getting those that offense, but the length right now is Dace Alexander has had a nice first half, 13 points uh, in the game so far with Southwest to cap. But that length inside by Nelson Adota, already 10 rebounds for her, six total points for Winder Barrow. It's a seesaw game back and forth, but I love the fact that neither team gave up. Maybe some foul trouble right now for Southwest to cap. Three starters already with two fouls. We'll watch that here in the second half. Yeah, and, and that's just Southwest to cap being aggressive. They're, they're doing what they what they know how to do, which is be aggressive, cause turnovers, get in the passing lane for, for easy baskets. You know? You've got a team like Wine and Barrel who, who's probably going to eventually pick you apart, and you have to stay disciplined within your half-court defense to let it succeed. And let's see again the shifting defense they've had for the Panthers. It's paid off dividends throughout the first half. Checking out the stats right now, you can see Winder Barrel, nice shooting uh, in this, especially they, they kind of picked up late in this. Southwest Cab picked up in the second half as well, the second quarter. Three of 21 shooting in the first quarter, they got hot in the second. Well, and, and they did. You know, you look at a team perspective like that Winder Barrel, They've taken almost 20 less field goal attempts to be 9 for 22. But the biggest thing that points out the fact that Southwest Cap has 11 steals. You know, they just have to be able to put that in the basket, take yeah. it to the bank with that. And that's the big thing again. A lot, a lot of second chances, a lot of extra chances with all the steals and the offensive rebounds. And yet they are tied right now. 13 turnovers for Winder Barrel and Olivia Nelson Adota, the 6'4 sophomore, 6 points, 10 rebounds. She played the entire 16 minutes of the first half. As we open up the second half right now, Southwest DeKalb with the ball. And again, we are tied in the opening minutes right here. 25 all. That's Oisaba, number 23. Just her second year of playing organized ball. We'll talk more about her later. She gets it underneath. Shot attempt is up. A little bit short. Off the knee. 
of Bostic, and it is Lady Dog's ball. And see South was a cab right there in that press. You're going to try to speed, wind the barrel up a little bit, make them uncomfortable. Well, it worked out. It worked out well for them in the first quarter. Winder Barrel really struggling with the various press, a full court press, uh, half court press. They beat it this time. Just kind of a token pressure there to see what they've got. Sealing back in a man to man now for Southwest to Cat. You got an isolation right now for Odota. It's a nice spin move. Couldn't get it to go. Ball is out of bounds there. That's off Kayla Sullivan, the sophomore, and it'll go over to Southwest to Cat. Third of four games today and day two of the championships here in Macon. Boys 5A game to come later. Miller Grove versus Alatoona. That's going to be a good game. Yeah, John Nelson, Sean Golden on the call for that one. Defense, defense, defense. Patient here for the Panthers. Alexander short on the outside jump shot. Cherry chases down the long rebound. Back to Walton. She can't get it to go. Nelson Adota, her 11th rebound of the game, but throws it away. Steal by Uwasiba. She throws it away. Cherry controls. Settle down if you're Southwest the Cab right now. Bostic gets it up and in. Corey Bostic with the basket. And again, a full court press. Nelson Adota brings it down. All of a sudden, it's a two on one. Mayweather over to Sullivan. Blocked by Oasiba. But she's called for the foul. That's her first. And Kayla Sullivan. Little line shooting two. It's that last basket again. This guy Alexander maybe partially blocked right there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was just a really unorthodox possession. You, you know, no one's really gained full possession of the ball, and she ends up at the recipient of a bucket. Free throw up and good. The first one for Sullivan. She's one of three at the line tonight. Instead, one of four. Panthers hang on to a one-point lead. Walton has the ball. She's been ice cold. Two of 19 shooting in this game. There's shot number 20. That won't go. Rebound goes out of bounds. It's off Winder Barrow. And you got to be able to, to create and to generate that extra pass for Southwest DeKalb. They do, they're doing good penetrating. But, you know, it's probably one of those things where if you have the ball and you penetrate it to try to get a basket, you're also looking for that outlet pass, and a lot of players, they aren't set up to be able to receive it. Alexander tries one from 12. That's no good. Big rebound there by Uwasiba. She just jumped higher than Nelson Odota. That one was a very, very, very good rebound. They have controlled the offensive boards. Not many second chance points, though. There's Uwasiba again, and she's fouled. We'll go to the line shooting two. And that foul is on Nelson Adota. That's her first. So Uasiba from St. Augustine, Nigeria, just her second year of organized basketball. The coach says she's a very fast learner. 4.0 GPA. Played JV ball last year, and now she's starting on the varsity and a chance to help her team to a state championship. She hits the second. And now 28-26, hitting one of two free throws. Winder Barrow breaks the press. Watson back in the game now as Mayweather sat down before that last free throw. Shot is up and no good. Ball out of bounds. It'll be Panthers ball. Imagine if Oasiba played basketball starting in her seventh right. or eighth grade. You know, I mean, she just, she's done a great job in just learning the game, learning the American culture, learning the academics, you know, and, and this is just two years that, that we know of. That's right. a great story. Well, she's, she's, she's very raw, but you're right. And to pick up not just the, the game of basketball, but as Coach Walton said, Southwest to Cam style of playing basketball on top of that. Three seconds violation in the lane. That's Southwest DeCamp's fifth turnover. Good coach. Good look there at Coach Walton. Again, seventh title game appearance in the last nine years. Trying to win one for the thumb. Get a fifth title. Up by two right now. Watson breaks the press for Winder Barrow. Almost turns it over. Maddox gets it to Perkins, the driving layup. And it's up and in. And we're tied once again. 
mean, she, she's just a smooth player. She's got a lot of stop and go to, to, her, to her game. Just a smooth player and very good at finishing at the basket. Third tie of the game now in this 5-8 championship under the five-minute mark of the third quarter. Southwest to cap with the ball. That's Chance Cherry to the star player, Alexander. Nice cross over there to free herself. Will help defense, it's not there, and we'll shoot a pair. Referees for this game, Dan Taylor, Haley Cox, and Dwayne Majors calling this game. Perkins call for the foul, that's her first for Winder Barrow. Alexander at the line shooting two. You know, if you're Southwest Cab, you're still trying to probe, figure it all out. Wind the barrel, stay with where you are. You like where you are. Right now, you're only down one in a game where, quite frankly, being a four seed, you know, you didn't think that you were ever going to get this far. So, like, it's from the beginning of the game, you have nothing to lose. So, and they're playing that way. You know, just shoulders light, happy to play the game of basketball. Alexander makes both free throws, but back to a two point lead now for Southwest to Cap. Watson with the ball to Perkins. Over to Lexi Maddox. And a foul call in Southwest to Cab. Looks like it's on Michaela Benefield in the game, the sophomore, her third foul. Winder Barrel out of bounds. Quick pass there to Nelson. Don't out the back iron, no. Lasiba. With the rebound, Southwest Cab now trying to make something happen on offense. Just one of the last nine shooting. But they're up by two. They've got to get that guard back at the high post. For the free throw line. they got a lot of really, really good action. To the pick right there. Alexander trying to find a good defense by Winder Barrow. A little bit of contact there, no foul. Rebound is all oh, thrown away. Benefield grabs it. And they call it traveling call there. And Luisaba, she was not quite ready for that pass, but once again, tight action on both sides. That full court press paying off for the Panthers. Third quarter right now in this Class 5A title tilt. It's a good one. Come right back after this. Southwest to Cab, up by two. Back to the Bacon Coliseum, Larry Smith, Keisha Brown, and Jackie Britton on the call here in this Class 5A title game. Hey, don't forget, this spring, don't miss all new episodes from GTV's Emmy Award-winning nature series, Georgia Outdoors. This host Sharon Collins explores the beauty of our state. Be sure to check out the Georgia Outdoors Facebook page for behind-the-scenes photos, upcoming showtimes, and so much more. Georgia Outdoors only on GPB. Talked before about uh, these two coaches, Brandon Thomas in his fifth year. First time as a head coach, spent uh, 10 years as an assistant. Last six before heading to Winder Barrow uh, at Pickens as an assistant to boys and girls. Called Coach Walton the Southwest to Cap when he got the Winder Barrow job to pick her brain. We'd ask her about it. She said, yeah, I might have told him too much. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so when she, tried, she talked to us, she didn't want to tell us anything. That's right. <laughs> Turn over here is again the press pays off for the Panthers. 16 turnovers now for Winder Barrow. You know, and they, and they have been protecting the ball so well. I mean, two turnovers in this court, now three. In a man-to-man -man defense, they're going to stick to that. They don't deviate much. Nice move by Alexander to free herself. High arcing shot up and in. Alexander now 17 points, game's leading score. It's a four-point lead for Southwest to Cab. Near turnover again there at midcourt. Nice pass Great to pass. Sullivan. Oh! Can't get the layup to go. Ball's out of bounds. It'll stay on this end. Winder Barrel controls. That's, that's the basket you got to have if you're Winder Barrel. You just you come out. Southwest Cab had a great offensive set coming out of it. You go back and get an easy two, you got to have that bucket. 
Nelson Adona can't handle the inbound. Stolen away by Cherry on the fast break. She's got Alexander on the wing. She looks at a three-pointer. Steps back and can't get it to go. Rebound the winder barrel. Watson, she throws it away. Alexander controls it. They're going to call it over and back. You know, and, and that's a tricky call because it's off of a rebound. You have a tip back from a rebound, but she actually gained possession in her front court. Her momentum brought her back into the backcourt. Yeah, and that's what the referee was saying. Here's one more look at it, just to your point. And she yeah, yes, traveled too. <laughs> yeah, looking at everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless, it was, it, was a, it was the right call. Yeah. Great hustle, as you'd expect, from the senior leader. Nelson Adota, way out from the basket. I feel like I'm waiting to see an alley oop somewhere along the way. She's so far out of the basket, just toss it. Get another turnover. It's 19 now. Good Quick pass. pass inside. Oh, I can't get it to go. Nelson Adota the rebound. Those outlet passes have been dangerous for them, though. Nearly another turnover. Perkins comes down to Watson for three. Too long. Mayweather back in the game with the rebound. And the reset right now for Winder Barrow. Watson to Perkins. The energy is kind of shifted a little bit towards Southwest Cab. So if you're Winder Barrow, you just have to hold on to it. You don't want to let this quarter get away from you to where it's unattainable in the fourth. Yeah, that defense really. Again, the press, they, they, they found a way to beat it in the first and second quarter, but they haven't been able to solve it here in the third quarter. This cherry was fouled. We'll see who it's called on. So it'll be on Perkins, and that's her second foul. And we've got a timeout in the floor here at the 209 mark. 32 28, Southwest Cab in control. Here in the 5 8 title game. Again, we talked to Coach Walton. It's a team that hit a slump and lost five in a row uh, during the holidays. They played a national schedule, went to Phoenix. Uh, a bunch of teams that were nationally ranked. They played state champs from Alabama. She said they really struggled, but they learned. They came home, licked their wounds, and rebounded. They got a nice mix of uh, veteran players and young players, as you can see on this team. But she said, you know, it's, it's amazing to think a team that has had the success they've had struggling, but she said this team that they never gave up, never stopped believing, and here they are, a chance to win out of the title. Let's go over to Jackie Britton for more. Jackie? Thanks, guys. Just a tidbit about Corey Bostick, number 32, senior for Southwest DeKalb. She's the oldest of eight siblings, and her coach was talking about her leadership as a teammate, and obviously has to imagine that that comes a little bit from being the leader of a family and siblings. I tell you what, she is motivated and animated on the sideline. It's almost like watching a second coach over there on by the bench. So coach has talked about her leadership and she's really rallying her teammates right now. Yeah, so she doesn't care if the players like her or not. She's pretty sure that everyone, <laughs> like you said, the coach's wishes are carried out. <laughs> right, and that's the essence of a true leader. You know, you don't care if, if you're not liked or not, but you are going to gain respect of your siblings, <laughs> of your teammates at that time. Alexander, that high arcy shot won't go. Nelson, Adota, 6-4, skies for the rebound, but another sloppy pass. Still winds up in the hands of Winder Barrel. Perkins on the run back. Can't get it to go, but she's fouled. And she'll shoot two. That's Latrice. Make that, check that. That is Raven Thurman. It appears to be called for the foul. Tierra Mayweather probably made the smartest play in, in that whole transition. You know, you, you get the pass that got deflected out, and then she deflects it down to her court, you know, and, and allows Perkins to get to get to the ball and get the foul. So Perkins now a chance to shoot two and misses the first. Again, that foul was on Thurman. That's her first. We see Benefield come out. Patrice Perkins, sophomore forward. Winder Barrow, seven point lead was their biggest lead of the game. Southwest to Cab, the current four point lead is their biggest, but right now it's three after the free throw made there by Perkins back to a three point advantage as we're under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. You know, Larry, going back to just the maturation of the Southwest to Cab team dealing with that national schedule. You know, you, you got to test the waters when you go out and, and see how good you are outside the state of Georgia. You know, they came back licking their wounds, like you said, but they also learned from it. And it was a great growth period for them, you know, and, and almost like to Coach Walton, 
they went from turning into players and to turning into teammates and understanding that they need each other to be able to compete at that national schedule. And I know as a coach, you would agree, you want to be able to peak now and not in December. So that, that pays off well. Another turnover by that press. They've really struggled breaking the press this entire second half. And that's why Southwest Cap has been on top 20 turnovers now in the game for Winder Barrow. Imagine the growth that Winder Barrow is getting from the state championship run. Absolutely. Nice pass right there into the hands of Raven Thurman. Give the assist to Uesiba. Five point lead now. The biggest in the game for the Panthers as we approach the one minute mark. Bullet pass underneath. Great look by the freshman to get it to Mayweather. You're going to have to look out for Chalea Watson. She's going to be a great player in the state of Georgia in the next couple of years. Yeah, Chalea Watson scores double digits. The coach says she comes in and just makes plays, but she did right there. That's a nice basket there is the Thurman coming through. Again, Raven Thurman, the freshman, another basket. Keeps it back to a five-point lead. And both guards just finding themselves behind the defense, getting easy baskets. Great play right there by the freshman, Chalea Watson, and the chance for a three-point play. <laughs> Yeah, this kid is good. She is fun to watch. She doesn't know what Southwest Cab means in yeah. her vocabulary. She's just out <laughs> playing ball. That's what you got to do. Take it to the backyard. This is what I do. I'm getting behind, getting around the defenders. Let's get a hand one. Fouls on Thurman. It's her second. Two freshmen right there. Thurman versus Watson for their respective teams. And Watson, that was a nice move as well. The fake, fake to the right, go to the left. Get Thurman to move, and she's called for the blocking foul. Another missed free throw here. But it's going to stay Winder Barrel ball. They've got a chance to close this gap even further. 35 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Lady Dogs with the ball. Looking for Nelson Adota. Good defense there by Alexander to knock it away. And another turnover for the Lady Dogs. Walton in the corner for three. That won't go. Mayweather the rebound. Tip pass right there to Perkins. Two on one. Perkins stop and pop. And it's in. It's a one-point game. She's starting to show just a little bit of excitement. You know, she's that steady player. You're not going to get much from her. You know, she's had the ball in her hands a lot, so she's got a good amount of turnovers. But yet and still, she's continuing to play for her team. Final seconds. I'm not sure Southwest Cap realized how much time is on the clock. Walton, the quick shot. I make that Alexander. It's an air ball, and that's the way it ends. Southwest Cap with the lead, but Winder Barrel, the Cinderella story out of Region 8 with all the momentum. Closing the gap on a quick run to close within one, 36 to 35. 7-2 run right here for the Lady Dogs. Can they come through and cap off their first playoff appearance in 22 years with a championship? Stay tuned and find out. Where do you come alive? A stadium, lecture hall, a music hall, church potluck? This year, you have a new spot, walkgeorgia.org, a free website that provides you with all the resources needed to get your heart rate up and body out in your community. Sign up and receive individual or group fitness tracking, fitness demos by certified trainers, recipes, and a guide to resources in your Georgia county, all in one easy-to-use site. When you move more, you live more. Walkgeorgia.org. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. This isn't just any team. This is your home team, okay? It's not about A team or B team. It's not about your boss telling you to be a team player or to take one for the team. No, home team is about pride. It's about standing strong, pulling together, and going crazy about a bad call you know is right. But because it was against your home team, it must be wrong. Look, some people just don't get it because it's not their team. But Farm Bureau Insurance does because everyone needs a home team for insurance. And we are that. This isn't Madison Square Garden. These drills probably won't make anyone a number one draft pick. But these players are practicing for something important. While they work on their jump shots, they're also learning teamwork, discipline, self-confidence, how to deal with wins and losses. Skills that will make them winners long after they leave the court. Support high school activities in your community. Because when kids take part, they get set for life. 
Well, they're about as even as you could be coming in, both 26 and 6 on the season, and one point separates them as we enter the final quarter here of this Class 5A title game. Uh, you know, Keisha, you're talking about, again, just some of the stats you notice with the shooting for Southwest DeKalb. Now, I mean, th these are just kind of absurd stats, and if you're a statistician and you hear these numbers, you're going to figure out, you don't know who's going to win this game. Between the two, Jada Walton and Deja Alexander for Southwest DeKalb, they're 9 for 44, wow. and they have uh, a total, Southwest DeKalb have a total of 57 field goal attempts. Now, that also leads to Windebarrow having 22 turnovers to Southwest DeKalb's 7, not being able to produce off those turnovers. But it also leads Windebarrow with 42% shooting as Southwest DeKalb only has 26% shooting because of the field goals. Right, teams. right. And the defense has been big for him, though. Perkins, nice shot there, won't go. It's Nelson Adota. She's been quiet in the second half, but comes up big there with a the putback there. Nelson Adota giving Winder Barrel the lead as we begin the opening minute here of the fourth quarter. It's very fundamentally sound. Went up, got the ball and rebound, kept it high, and finished with her left hand. Alexander can hit Nelson Adota the rebound. Full court press. Winder Barrel turns it over again. She showed a slight piece of being a freshman right there. You had Tierra Mayweather wide open down, down on the other end. Thurman underneath, that won't go. Ball is out of bounds, it's gonna stay here. Southwest to cap. And you know, that's been the Achilles heel for Winder Barrel, if they just uh, take a second, a little more, pre but Southwest to cap, that pressure, they're counting on them trying to get the ball out quickly on the up-tempo. It's paid off dividends for them because a lot of those turnovers in the fast break have been just unforced errors. Right, and you know, Winder Barrel doesn't want to be pressed, so what do they do? You have to try to get it down into your half court as fast as possible, which, Southwest Cab is ready for it, and they're being able to pick them off. Another miss right there by Alexander. It misses everything, goes out of bounds. And so Winder Barrel has the ball, full court press now again. It's Nelson Adota trying to beat the press. Again, Dicey trying to get across midcourt. They finally do, but inside, there's Sullivan, and she loses the ball. Great defense there by Raven Thurman to give Sullivan the bump, dribble the ball off her knee. And it goes out of bounds. Another turnover now for the Lady Dogs. Here come the Panthers back, down by one. 5A title game. Winder Barrow, first playoff appearance since 1994. Trying to go all the way to end the drought in a big way. Cherry for three. That was a pass. <laughs> no. That was a pass. Yeah, that, that was part of the play. You can see Coach Washington give her the ball, and she just she just took the thing right off. That was a pass. So we should call this as a, well, it would have been an assist, I and guess. An attempted it was, assist, okay. absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to give you back, Cherry. There you go. Thurman. Shoot two. It has happened. I have been, I have been with a coach, Coach Mike Tebow, with the Connecticut Sun that actually drew up a play that would have Shannon Johnson throw the ball half court and, and you bank the pass off of the backboard for an easy lay-in because you have your offensive rebound right there. <laughs> a lane violation, I think. Oh, yeah, Michaela yeah. Benefield called for the lane violation. So that negates the free throw, keeps it at a tie game here. Could we be any closer? Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. No press this time for Southwest DeKalb. Back to a half-court set. The winder barrel. Nelson Adona on the wing. Shoots from 16. That's not good. Falls up the shot, though. Gets her own rebound. The lefty back up and in. How about that for the dexterity for the sophomore? When you're able to finish with your right and your left. Keep the ball high when you rebound. You can. She's had some great training. Just great people around her to show the nuances of basketball, especially as a center. Yeah, and only a sophomore. Boy, her, what a bright future she has. Olivia Nelson Adota, star players in the making in the state of Georgia. Alexander, another miss. Fight for the rebound underneath. It'll be a tie ball. And it's going to stay on this end, Southwest DeKalb basketball. Southwest DeKalb Panthers vying for their first championship since 2013. That's Walton back in the game. Wasiba comes out. Panthers in a slump. Six consecutive misses from the field. Walton trying to get it to go. That's off the front iron, doesn't go. Another offensive rebound, though. Walton controls. Extra pass, that's it. Extra pass. Miss, I want to move the ball, make the extra pass. Still can't go. Another rebound, Thurman. 
Back out to Cherry. You have to move that defense. Make them move. That, let the ball find the open person. A foul away from the ball, and Alexander was fouled. Let's see who the no, Perkins crime was. Was it Perkins? Yeah, it was a slight frustration foul for her. Okay, and that's her third foul. No one in the bonus yet. And they call Alexander for traveling. And Coach Walton calling for the press. Now it's to the but here's where the patience has to come in. This might be the first time Coach Walton has stood up this I game. I think it has. Yeah. I think you're right. Look at Watson with a nifty hand, nifty uh, dribbling, and it's a timeout called by Winder Barrow. Hey, Chelly Watson. A little nifty uh, behind the back dribbling right there. Yeah. But a timeout call by Winder Barrow up by two right now at the 459 mark here uh, in the fourth quarter. You know, all, all of Coach Thomas's timeout have come while they're being pressed. So he's slowly continuing to figure out how to break the press. You yeah, can only imagine the next four minutes and 59 seconds he'll figure it out. Just how exciting is this for this Winder Barrel team? Let's go over to Jackie right now. She has a special guest. I do have a very special guest. The principal of Winder Barrow High School joins me, Al Darby. I tell you what, when I was in high school, my principals were not this spirited. You've got to tell me about your little get up here. Yes, ma'am. It was actually a challenge. We had a couple meetings at the central office when we made it to the first round at Villa Rica. And a challenge came from the assistant coach, Kimberly Garrett. She said, Coach, you're going to have to do something. I'm an ex-coach myself. And she said, you're going to have to do something special. And I said, well, I'm not shaving my head like I did 20 years ago. And so she said, well, paint up. And so I painted up Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final Four. And now the championship has been nothing but an awesome ride. So is this a wig? Yes, ma'am, it's a wig. Yes, ma'am, I got it out of the drama class. <laughs> Can I borrow it? Yes, ma'am, absolutely, Miss Jackie. Yes, and then this is... Um... Yes, ma'am, I told when we first went to the Sweet 16, when we cut the nets down, we'll replace it. So it's been exciting for this community. It's been exciting for our school and obviously our faculty, but most importantly, our girls' basketball program. All right, well, I'll let you get back to work. Yes, ma'am, thank you, Miss Jackie. Thank you. All right, serious you business. Thank you. We appreciate it. Oh, I Larry love it. Keisha, you got to top that. All right, you know, I can't. Go, that, all the principals I had back in school were never that cool. As we get back to live action right now, that foul, by the way, was on Jada Walton for Southwest Cab. That's her third. And so it's Olivia Nelson Adota now at the line, shooting a pair, and she misses the first. Nelson Adota, 13 rebounds, 10 points, a double double already in this game. Second shot is away, and that's not good. So. Still a two-point game right now. It's run to the five-minute mark. Southwest cab. Can they find some offense? Shooting just 26% in the game. 23% now as it's dropped. 0 for 6 shooting from the field here. Make it 0 for 7 in the fourth quarter. Nelson Adota the rebound and trying to push. That's Perkins keeping it herself. Can't get it to go. Cherry the rebound. Panthers look to push. Three on three. Alexander from Thurman. And they're going to get Watson on the foul. Julia Watson. That's her second foul. No shot. Sixth team foul for Winder Barrow. Alexander with Perkins on her. Pulls it out. Man-to-man -man defense, trying to keep up with the senior. Alexander, the Auburn signee, can't get that to go. Thurman back up and in, the freshman That's falling tough. down. Yeah, she wanted that bucket. Great second chance points there. Ties it at 39. Watson quickly back down now for Winder Barrow. Off her knee, fifth tie of the game. We go the other way to Thurman, the freshman. Back-to-back -back baskets for Raven Thurman, and as the Panthers go back on top, as we cross in the four-minute mark here, Spirited game, emotions riding high in this one. Winder Barrow crosses with Perkins inside to the big sophomore Nelson. A Dota, she can't get it to go, but she's fouled. You know, we, we talk about the senior leadership and the experience that you're getting from Southwest Cab, but how about the freshman Thurman doing her job? <laughs> you know, it, it's just it's been great to watch on both ends. You've, you've got two good freshmen 
and, and Walton and, and, and Watson, that's really the story here. They're doing a great job, not to mention Nelson Adota. I mean, Thurman's just done a great job just being on the board, being that blue collar worker, going after the basketball, being at the right place at the right time and finishing for South Pacific Cavs. She's been a great, bright spot for him. Such a great job. Second free throw, both in now for Nelson Adota. We have a tie game yet again, sixth tie of the game. And to your point, South Pacific Cav, you talk about Thurman. Selected to second team in the region. Puts in there, there's a lot of dirty work. And that's a basket by Alexander. She breaks her drought. And the Panthers back on top by two. That was a Dwayne Wade type finish right there. <laughs> Strong left hand. Perkins gets that to go. Latrice Perkins. Team's trading baskets right now. We're tied again at 43. Now, I will say, I'll call myself out on this one. I wasn't expecting a ball game of this caliber. You know, you would think, with just with the history of Southwest Cap, that they were just going to take this game over. But Wynder Barrow has done a great job of staying within themselves. And another unforced error right there is that was Lexi Maddox with the rebound, but she didn't dribble the ball on the end line. And so it's going to go back over to Southwest Cap. And to your point, uh, they've done a nice job on it's been a, really a defensive struggle on both ends. Southwest Cab, the full court trap defense paying dividends and creating turnovers. Nelson Adola, their call for the foul, as it was a nice play on the out of bounds. Corey Voss sneaking in. She'll now shoot two. And that's uh, Nelson Adola's second foul. But on the other side, how about Wider Barrow and what they've done in the half court are really keeping the stars, Alexander and Walton, in check. Both of them approaching a total of 50 shots in this game. Well, I mean, they're doing that because what you want to do is you want to limit the easy shot from Southwest Cab. They're used to getting to the bucket, getting those easy baskets, turn around, deflections on defense, going back and get those easy baskets. They're having to work for every shot. Bostic hits both free throws. That's Watson very quickly on the other end. Ball knocked away, though, and it'll stay on this end. Lady Dog's ball. I like the way you drag that G out. It's your dog's <laughs> ball. That's right. <laughs> Two Gs. Yeah. Like Snoop, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Watson for three, it goes in and out. What a job there oh. by Perkins. Oh, but she throws it away. The Panthers on the push, up by two. Approaching the 2.30 mark here in the 5A title game. Southwest Cab, the perennial powerhouse. Winder Barrow, the upstart, trying to close out the greatest season in program history. They're within two right now here in Macon. Alexander. Perkins on her. Another shot in and out, knocked out of bounds. It will be a say off Southwest again. And they'll keep the press on right here. 2.10 to go. Perkins to trigger to Nelson Adota. Perkins clears the press. That's Maddox. Short. Cherry the rebound. She looks to push. Cherry all the way in, and she's fouled. Tough move, tough move. I mean, she saw it. The great thing about that whole thing, she kept her head up down the court the whole entire time. While she's looking for her outlet pass, she understands nobody is in front of her. She's going strong to that basket. Nice crossover move, good, fit, good attempt at a finish. She got two free throws. Tierra Mayweather called for the foul. That's her first. And Cherry hits the first free throw. It's her first of the game, first point of the game. She's been great on defense, though. Look at the, those long arms, forcing those turnovers. Second free throw. Back to a four-point lead now for Southwest Cab, And the pressure on again, full court. Nelson Adota, long pass down to Lexi Maddox. And she goes in for the easy, uncontested layup. They beat the press finally and cut that lead in half. And it's definitely interesting because you have your big handle on the ball. And you've got your two guard, Tierra Mayweather. She's down on the, on the block. <laughs> It's worked out. Long arms. Good vision at 6-4 to see the pass down court. Oh, Corey Bostic there. Great assist by Alexander. Just staying under the defense. Just probing yourself under defense. Good pick by Bostic. Again, trouble. They got to hurry. Trouble with the press. Got to hurry. And a timeout called by Coach Thomas. 112 to go, four-point lead right now for Southwest Cab. Can Winder, Barrow, answer? Mm -hmm. 
We talked about Latrice Perkins. Look at what she's done in this game. It's been outstanding. The sophomore forward. She had the defensive assignment on Deja Alexander. And she just, she's playing her game. She's staying within herself. Like I said, this is the type of atmosphere that they're not used to being in. So what can you do? Stay to your normalcy. This is, I'm going to put the ball on the floor. I'm going to take the open shots when I have the opportunity to take them. Coach says she really gives us a lot of athleticism. Scored over 300 points on the season. Again, just a sophomore. She's kept Winder Barrel in this game. Four ties, by the way, in this fourth quarter. Seven in the game. Good look there at the crowd. Some of the fans here. Again, a great crowd for all seven games so far. And one more to go today. And another day of action tomorrow. Holy Innocence earlier winning a thriller in overtime. They take the 2A title over Wesleyan. For the girls, the boys 2A game, Pace Academy follows up their football championship in the Dome in December with a decisive win here over Manchester in the game that preceded this one. And coming up next, a 5A title game, Miller Grove versus Alatuna for the boys. At the live action right now is the freshman Watson for Winder Barrow. Picks up her dribble. Nelson Adota comes out to save her. Now it's Perkins again. Very nice game for the Lady Dogs. Again, picks up her dribble. Maddox back to Perkins. Accept the pressure, sophomore, and ride with it. Great pressure on the ball. They've got to score at some point. Yeah. Nearly turns it over again. Nelson Adota gets it to They've Maddox. They've got to score. Yeah. Great defense by Southwest to yeah, Absolutely. Watson in. Nice runner by the freshman. It's a two-point game again. Yeah, you got to foul. You got to come up and foul quickly. They don't hear Coach with the no. noise. He's trying to get him to foul. He's screaming foul. I think the crowd was screaming foul for him, too. <laughs> yeah, they've got to understand that situation. Huh? That's just a part of, of being in this atmosphere and understanding the time to score position on it. Foul was on Perkins. That's her fourth. And boy, that's big. 13 points for her in the game of her fourth foul. And so now here's the sophomore, Michaela Benefield, at the line. Shooting for her first points, and she misses. Nelson Adota the rebound. But stolen away by Southwest Cab. However, saying she's out of bounds. It'll remain Lady Dogs ball. 13.8 to go. Southwest to Cab, up by two, trying to win their fifth title since 2008. Winder Barrel, can they force a tie? The pressure is on. Wide open, two on one break. Maddox inside, taking it to the Nelson Adota. But she's fouled, and she has a chance to go to the line and shoot two and tie this game up. What a game she has played for Winder Barrel. Olivia Nelson Adota. That foul is on Corey Bostic. It's her second foul for Southwest DeKalb. And the Panthers want a timeout. Coach Walton wants to talk about it. One more look inside right here. You take it, make that defense commit. You get a tough shot, but you understand that you got Nelson Adota right there for offensive rebounding. Well, the strength of Nelson Adota, she almost got that to go. Imagine if that shot falls. We're tied, and she's at the line with a chance to win this game. We've talked about Nelson Adota. Just a look at what she's done in this game. And you've talked about, again, just that she's ambidextrous. She can finish with either hand. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's a rare quality that you, that you see in athletes in high school. But, you know, she's not an athlete in high school. She's a high-profile athlete, and she will be that way until she, fi she finds that scholarship for college. She's done a great job of taking what the defense gives her, going after the, her own misses and finishing with easy layups. She's super athletic, a fun player to watch, and we understand now why Coach was so excited talking about her. He said, you know, he said she's skinny but tall at 6'4". She's a vocal leader. You know what? She may be, but to me, she's led with her game and her actions on the court on both ends. Well, I mean, absolutely. It, you know, she's had a great offseason, so you can see what happens when you put your cell phone down, as a lot of coaches have said these days. You put your cell phone down, and you get in the gym, and you work on your game, and she's done just that in the offseason. 12 points, 19 rebounds for Olivia Nelson Adota. And now the game on the line. The sophomore a chance here with two free throws. Pressure free throws to tie this up. As you can see there on your screen, she's four of six at the line so far tonight. First of two. Nothing but net. 
I'm taking my chances with her on the free throw. I am too. Ice water running through her veins. Just a sophomore. Olivia Nelson Adota. The chance to tie. And she misses. Rebound is tipped around. Southwest of Cab, that's Cherry with the rebound and the quick foul. And she'll come down and shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. And you, you still got an opportunity here. You're only down one basket, even if she makes both. You still have one timeout. Here's one more look at that second free throw. Off the back iron. Yeah. Rebound tipped around. Cherry right there, foul. And Perkins got her hand on it, too. A double bonus. On Watson, her third. So she's got two free throws. You still have an opportunity to wind around. And she misses the first. And so Coach Thomas quickly trying to call a timeout, and he gets it. And that's their final timeout of the game. He's got to draw something up to beat the press. And you know what? The thing is, you probably look at it and tell me if you agree with this. You've got to get the hands in the, the ball in the hands of Nelson Adona. Win, make or miss on this one. She's had the vision to throw down court. And both the free throws of the, the uh, I'm sorry, the full court basket they had in the fourth quarter have been triggered by Nelson Adona's pass. Right, and I'm going to tell you something fun. You know, with Sullivan, number 24, she's a softball player. So you, you might get her the opportunity to take it out of bounds. You run a four flat, and you throw a touchdown pass. There you go. Game on the line. What a season for both of these teams. Wine Rivera, we mentioned, they were the four seed. If you're just joining us, out of Region 8. Now you expect to get this far. 15 and 11 last year, 26 and 6 this year. Yeah, you rebound, if she misses this, then the clock is going to start immediately on the touch. Will Wine Rivera, you have to pressure the ball. Lane violation, no basket. We're going to wave off the free throw. Second time that's happened for Southwest to Cab, and so a chance now to win the game. 5.9 left. The shooter, the shooter has to wait till that ball touches yep. the rim, and she's leaving early. And she was the one. Push. There we go. Watson on the push. To Mayweather. Oh, she threw the ball out of bounds. The play was to get it to Mayweather in the corner. That was what they wanted. You got to be able to foul quickly. Yeah. So you got to, you got to defend the inbounds. That's what coach is trying to tell him. Southwest DeKalb calls a timeout. 27th turnover by Winder Barrow in this game. You, you, stay, you stay focused here. You got to stay focused. There's 1.5 seconds left on the clock. Even though it was just a, it was a good pass, just not the, the right pass, a good eyeball, just not right. the right pass for it to be made. Well, Okay, coming up next, our boys 5A game. Miller Grove at 29-2 versus Alatuna at 31-0. That is our next game coming up uh, just in just a few moments here, running a little bit behind schedule. This game has gone long, deservedly so. The first game again going into overtime, holy innocence. Boy, what a game, a day of basketball we have had here in Macon. We are thrilled to bring it to you here on GPB. And don't forget, we are back here tomorrow, beginning at 11 a.m. 11, 12.45, you know, we've got the 3 o'clock game, up at 7 o'clock. If, if you want some good breakfast in the morning, you want to come to this 11 o'clock right. game. That's right. You've got two teams going head-to-head -head for the boys and girls of St. Francis and Green Forest. I mean, just great basketball on both ends. One of the top players in the country, Colby Jordan Simmons, for that St. Francis team just committing last month to, to Arizona. Look who's on the ball. Sure. 6-4, Olivia Nelson Adota, 1.5 left. Winder Barrel trying to force a turnover here. Jump like a championship depends on it. Long pass, ball game. Southwest attack holds on. The Panthers champions once again. It's a great effort. Not exactly the game you would want to have as a championship game for Southwest Cab, but they held on. They held on and they played great defense in the stretches that they need to play defense and capitalize off those turnovers. Congratulations, Southwest Cab. What a season. You know, and absolutely, you have to take your hats off to, to Wine and Barrel. They haven't been in this situation, but my, have they learned? You know, they actually went with the, with the short string. He only played six people the entire game. Coach Thomas did. But the experience that these girls got from 
the moment that they that they wanted to send them to the championship game. They've gotten so much experience from them. And hats off to just a great game, sticking to the game plan and understanding what a bright future they have. Well, Coach talked about Flowery Branch and Gainesville, the teams in here, their region. Guess what? There's a new team to watch in that region. That's Winder Barrow with all the young players they've got. Again, three starting sophomores. Lexi Maddox is a junior, so you're going to return four of your starters next year. MC, MC. Remember this Winder Barrow Bulldogs team. They are a team to be reckoned with next year. What a great job here by Southwest DeKalb. Fifth championship and since 2008. What a job by the Panthers. We'll have the trophy celebration coming up in just a moment. Congrats to the Panthers, champions once again. Rebecca Davis, their maker. So many reasons why I want to never... The GHSA Basketball Championships are made possible in part by Regions Bank, it's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more, and by viewers like you. Thank you. The GHSA would like to thank the Georgia Farm Bureau. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the Technical College System of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG College in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. As a strong, stable bank, Regions is always looking for opportunities to boost the vitality of our communities. In addition to offering financial solutions for our customers, we are committed to supporting local initiatives and organizations that help our neighborhoods thrive. Regions is proud to be a partner with GPB in building a better Georgia. What is by moonlight an empty field is by the magic of electricity, sacred ground. As the official energy provider of the GHSA, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives proudly support our student athletes. We are there, illuminating the glory moments fans just have to see. Capturing the hustle, elevating champions, sharing the win. Georgia's EMCs, empowering our youth, lighting the way. What a terrific finish to the girls' 5A state championship game. And now to present the championship trophy, the executive director of the GHSA, Gary Phillips. Mark, thank you. Coach Walton, congratulations on a thrilling victory tonight. Thank you so much. Yet another state championship. Congratulations thank to you, you and your team. Great job, ladies. <laughs> Coach. I know it never gets old, but this is number five since 2008. Talk about the journey of your girls and their championship today. Well, it was a tough journey. You know, they battled through a lot, a lot of adversity, uh, injuries, illnesses, things like that. But they believed in each other. They trusted each other. What's this mean to you and your program to win yet another one? And, and really talk about the game because this was a one-point nail-biter all the way. Well, I was just so proud of the young ladies. I mean, they, they're like sisters. They really trust each other. They play together. And just a lot of heart and hustle, and they just wanted it, and they went out and got it. Well, I see Dace and Corey have the ball and the trophy. Let's get you two over here real quick. Talk about what this championship means to you. I mean, me, everything. We ain't won since my freshman year. You know, we came back our second, my sophomore year, we lost in a state championship, and my junior year, we didn't even make it. So it's just, it just means a lot to go out with a ring in a state championship. Corey, you're also a senior. Talk about what it means to you to go out on top in your final high school game. I mean, this is just what a family is. We pushed through a lot of things throughout the whole season. We came together. I mean, we remember what it felt like our freshman year. We had to lead the team and make sure it didn't happen again. And we got the W tonight. And so it's just a fantastic feeling to know that work paid off. Hey, give a shout out to your fans out there. The Panther Nation is fired up. It's Panther Nation over there. 
right, congratulations to the Southwest DeKalb Lady Panthers. Five champions since 2008. Congratulations to the 5A 2016 state champs. And now it's time for our tailgate party.